Hey guys, welcome to the Posted Times, your source for Australian and world news. This is your destination for Australian and world news. If you want to see some of the things that I think are pretty unimportant but are still cool regardless, please go to my other show, The Cursory Things. So, since this is your first time, I'm going to explain like how my annotations are going to work over here. I'm going to, there are two sections, Australian and world. Also, there are the news stories. So if you want to skip at any point something that I'm saying and go to a specific story, then just click over there. <laughs> anyway, let's begin with Australian news. So asylum seekers are essentially like refugees. The only difference is refugees have access to the queue, which is a UN facility that is often set up in their country, allowing them to get safe passage out of their country legally. In the case of asylum seekers, since they can't get out of their country in a much easier way through the UN, they can't use stuff like planes, so as a result they often end up in overly crowded boats. Often the result of them not being able to have access to the UN facilities, they often have to go into overcrowded boats, which has caused a plethora of tragedies. So asylum seekers are people who are trying to evade their country because of war or violence or discrimination. However, unlike refugees, they don't have access to uh, UN facilities, so as a result, they have to find their own way, essentially, to get there without use of planes or... Uh... So asylum seekers are essentially like refugees. The only difference is refugees have access to the queue, which is a UN facility that is often set up in their country, allowing them to get safe passage out of their country legally. As a result of all these the influx of boats carrying asylum seekers to Australia, Australia have developed policies involving turning away boats and sending them to nearby location, whether they be Malaysia, Christmas Island, similar places, to allow refuge for these asylum seekers. However, this idea has not been out without fault, and as a result, quite a lot of these boats either before being turned away, have had some kind of tragic outcome. The most recent of which was a capsizing of an asylum seeker boat carrying a suspected 150 asylum seekers. The problem is, however, that there is somewhere between 24 and 40 people who have not been found. And worse still, this could potentially be 24 to 40 bodies. The issue of asylum seekers is definitely a big one and I seriously hope that we can work through this because it is a very complicated issue. There are people who don't want this to happen because they know that it will increase taxes and take away jobs and stuff. But there are also people who are just like, we can't just turn these people away because they're trying to escape their country. They need some kind of solace. But moving right along to Australia is set obsessed with sports news. Sam Stozer lost in the second round to the 72nd ranked player. I don't know what her name is. It's like something ruse. Uh, it, it's very difficult to pronounce her name. She's Dutch. Not only does it suck for Sam Stozer because, I mean, she's ranked fifth and she lost to the person who was ranked 72nd. But this is also kind of sucks for Australia because she is the only person, she was the only person that was still in Wimbledon in Australia and that basically goodbye to uh, Wimbledon for this year. So that kind of sucks. A admittedly I'm the kind of person who doesn't really care about, that much about that. Uh, I, I love how people are just getting so obsessed over this and I'm just like, I'm one, I'm one of those rare Australians who isn't obsessed with sports. I know it's a miracle. So moving on to the planet news, and uh, Oreos have turned 100, and as a result, they've been posting a lot of pictures of Oreos being made into different things. So they had one where there was a paw print to celebrate some doggos. However, one of the ones this week has been a bit controversial. So the gay Oreo that is scene here has got Oreo a lot of support but has also got a lot of criticism from tons of people because as a general rule if you're gonna 
advertise for anything, you're allowed to have an opinion on one thing, your product. If you have a, a, an opinion on any kind of issue, you, no, you're screwed. You're in deep doo-doo right there. So Oreo posted the following pic on Twitter with the caption, Share pride for love. Is that what it was? And the internet went all crazy, troll, blah, on it. There are people who said something like, Gay is a crime. And there are also people who are like, Eating Oreos is now a sin because it's related to gay people. And it just really hurts me right here that people can do this piece. Can be such assholes. I mean, why? Why do you need? Why do you feel a need to say these kinds of things? And and worse still, I hate the fact that people use internet and social media as as a tool for spreading hate. And and to be perfectly honest, even though I would hate to hear people like protesting gays, I would rather someone just goes out somewhere and says that, like gets a megaphone and yells that, as opposed to putting it on social media. Because social media is just such a fucking cowardly way to spread your hate. Because no one can see you, and like no one can reply to you, and and nobody knows about it. If you go on, if you, if you do something stupid in public, be an asshole in public, then the news catches on and then everyone knows about it. If you do it on social media, you're just fucking hiding. It just really annoys me. Because the internet, I believe, is such a beautiful place. You can you can share memories, you can inspire, you can inform, you can change the way people think about media just in general. And then there are people who just fuck it up by by just saying, gay is a crime. I'm never going to eat Oreos again because I posted that picture and I don't like gays because I'm a homophobe. Blah, blah, blah. It, it just hurts me that people can be so fucking ignorant and can be so fucking cowardly. Why? No reason for that. And in a move that kind of restores my faith in humanity, there have been uh, petitions to actually get the gay Oreo to become a reality. They are actually quite a lot of the way there. They've got over a thousand signatures. If you want to lend your support, links down in the description. Please sign it. That, that would be awesome. Not only because, because gay support for the LGBT community, but also that looks freaking delicious. That looks awesome. I wonder, I wonder to see what those flavours are. Maybe like a mint and a banana and something. It's like, oh. Oh, that's disgusting. I'm probably giving myself tons of germs from doing that. And overall, I've got, I've got to say, go Oreo. That is freaking awesome. Because some people I understand might say, Oh, well, LGBT is the flavour of the month, isn't it? Good job, advertisers, just trying to screw with our emotions. To which I say, no. Like, why would, why would they do that? You do realise that if you present an issue that segregates people, you're gonna be, you might get some people to get more, but there are other people that won't. And while I understand that, that in terms of advertising, it's better to do something that appeals to everyone and to, and to not have an opinion on anything except yourself. I, it, I, I, I've got to give props to, to Oreos because they took a risk. They took a major risk and potentially tons of people that say they're gonna boycott are gonna boycott. And I mean, there are people who said, I'm going to buy twice as many so that I can make up for all those retards. Uh, but still, wow, that is such a massive risk. Uh, they, they had almost nothing to gain from it and pretty much Sad, hopefully less than half of society, but a good chunk of society in terms of customers to lose from it. I've just got to say, wow, that, that's, that's a bold move. I, I respect that kind of stuff. What? 
but what the hell? Okay, so I understand a couple of you might be a bit confused, so let me give you guys a bit of a backstory. This is a two-part story. The first part revolves around uh, Obama's Obamacare uh, project. So the Obamacare project, it, well, it's not really a project, it's more like a government movement, is a move by the US government to rearrange and completely change the way the US healthcare system works. There's a pretty major change to the way uh, that this is functioning, so as a result they had to take it to court. The specific thing, if you really want to know, is that they, and in a move that kind of restores my faith in humanity, there have been uh, petitions to actually get the gay Oreo to become a reality. They are actually quite a lot of the way there. They've got over a thousand signatures. If you want to lend your support, links down in the description. Please sign it. That that would be awesome. Not only because because gay support for the LGBT community, but also that looks freaking delicious. That looks awesome. I wonder I wanted to see what those flavors are. Maybe like a mint and a banana and something. It's like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. oh, that's disgusting. I'm probably giving myself tons of germs from doing that. And overall, I've got, I've got to say, go Oreo. That is freaking awesome. Because some people I understand might say, oh, well, LGBT is the flavor of the month, isn't it? Good job, advertisers, just trying to screw with our emotions. To which I say, no. Like, why would, why would they do that? You do realize that if you present an issue that segregates people, you're gonna be, you might get some people to get more, but there are other people that won't. And while I understand that, that in terms of advertising, it's better to do something that appeals to everyone and to, and to not have an opinion on anything except yourself, I, it, I, I, I've got to give props to, to Oreos because they took a risk. They took a major risk, and potentially tons of people that say they're going to boycott are going to boycott. And I mean, there are people who said, I'm going to buy twice as many so that I can make up for all those retards. Uh, but still, wow, that is such a massive risk. Uh, they, they had almost nothing to gain from it, and pretty much... Sad, hopefully less than half of society, but a good chunk of society in terms of customers to lose from it. And I've just got to say, wow, that, that's that's a bold move. I, I respect that kind of stuff. What? But what the hell? Okay, so I understand a couple of you might be a bit confused. So let me give you guys a bit of a backstory. This is a two-part story. The first part revolves around uh, Obama's Obamacare uh, project. So the Obamacare project, it, well, it's not really a project, it's more like a government movement, is a move by the US government to rearrange and completely change the way that the US healthcare system works. There's a pretty major change to the way uh, that this is functioning, so as a result they had to take it to court. The specific thing, if you really want to know, is that they, and in a move that kind of restores my faith in humanity, there have been uh, petitions to actually get the gay Oreo to become a reality. They are actually quite a lot of the way there. They've got over a thousand signatures. If you want to lend your support, links down in the description. Please sign it. That, that would be awesome. Not only because, because gay support for the LGBT community, but also that looks freaking delicious. That looks awesome. I wanted, I wanted to see what those flavors are. Maybe like a mint and a banana and something. It's like, oh, 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 no, 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 no. oh, that's disgusting. I'm probably giving myself tons of germs from doing that. And overall, I've got, I've got to say, go Oreo. That is freaking awesome. Because some people I understand might say, oh, well, LGBT is the flavor of the month, isn't it? Good job, advertisers, just trying to screw with our emotions. To which I say, no. Like, why would why would they do that? You do realize that if you present an issue that segregates people, you're gonna be. You might get some people to get more, but there are other people that won't. And while I understand that 
that in terms of advertising it's better to do something that appeals to everyone and to and to not have an opinion on anything except yourself the, I it I I I've got to give props to to Oreos because they took a risk they took a major risk and potentially tons of people that say they're going to boycott are going to boycott and I mean, there are people who said, I'm going to buy twice as many so that I can make up for all those retards. Uh, but still, wow, that is such a massive risk. Uh, you, they, they had almost nothing to gain from it. And pretty much, sad, hopefully less than half of society, but a good chunk of society in terms of customers to lose from it. And I've just got to say, wow. That's that's a bold move. I, I respect that kind of stuff. What? But what the hell? Are you... Okay, so I understand a couple of you might be a bit confused. So let me give you guys a bit of a backstory. This is a two-part story. The first part revolves around uh, Obama's Obamacare uh, project. So the Obamacare project, it, well, it's not really a project. It's more like a government movement. Is a move by the U.S. government to rearrange and completely change the way that the US healthcare system works. There's a pretty major change to the way uh, that this is functioning, so as a result they had to take it to court. The specific thing, if you really want to know, is that they, and in a move that kind of restores my faith in humanity, there have been uh, petitions to actually get the gay Oreo to become a reality. They are actually quite a lot of the way there. They've got over a thousand signatures. If you want to lend your support, links down in the description. Please sign it. That that would be awesome. Not only because because gay support for the LGBT community, but also that looks freaking delicious. That looks awesome. I wonder. I wonder to see what those flavors are. Maybe like a mint and a banana and something. It's like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. oh, that's disgusting. I'm probably give myself tons of germs from doing that. And overall, I've got I've got to say, go Oreo. That is freaking awesome. Because some people I understand might say, oh well, LGBT is the flavor of the month, isn't it? Good job, advertisers, just trying to screw with our emotions. To which I say, no. Like, why would why would they do that? You do realize that if you present an issue that segregates people, you're gonna be, you might get some people to get more, but there are other people that won't. And while I understand that, that in terms of advertising, it's better to do something that appeals to everyone and to, and to not have an opinion on anything except yourself, the, I, it, I, I, I've got to give props to, to Oreos because they took a risk they took a major risk, and potentially tons of people that say they're going to boycott are going to boycott. And I mean, there are people who said, I'm going to buy twice as many so that I can make up for all those retards. Uh, but still, wow, that is such a massive risk. Uh, they, they had almost nothing to gain from it, and pretty much... Sad, hopefully less than half of society, but a good chunk of society in terms of customers to lose from it. And I've just got to say, wow, that, that's that's a bold move. I, I respect that kind of stuff. What? But what the hell? You okay, so I understand a couple of you might be a bit confused. So let me give you guys a bit of a backstory. This is a two-part story. The first part revolves around uh, Obama's Obamacare uh, project. So the Obamacare project, it, well, it's not really a project, it's more like a government movement, is a move by the US government to rearrange and completely change the way that the US healthcare system works. There's a pretty major change to the way uh, that this is functioning, so as a result they had to take it to court. The specific thing, if you really want to know, is that they, unfortunately in doing so, they broke the golden rule of news reporting. Make sure the stuff that you're talking about actually happened. So that is a slight problem and it's kind of the thing that makes people question 
why they bother trusting these kinds of news sources because there are, these are news sources that claim to be the most trusted and the gold standard and I know that like some of them like fo <laughs> Fox like, everyone just makes joke like if you watch a couple of episodes of Symptoms odds are there will be a joke about Fox News because they are pretty shit but still it's, it's just sad and this isn't some kind of slight thing like, they misquoted someone. They got the opposite thing. What happened? Obama's thing, what actually happened? What CNN and Fox said? It didn't. They're completely opposite. How do you make such a stupid mistake? And it kind of makes me wonder, was it even a mistake? How can you be so wrong? And just have it accidentally. It kind of, it almost sounds like to me, <laughs> there's a 50 50 chance it will work out. If we're gonna get in first, what the hell? <laughs> and it's really sad because it makes me call into the, to question what journalism is. Because journalism is always, always supposed to be about getting the truth out to the people. But it's, it's, it's also kind of sad because, I mean, I have to trust, if I want to do a news show, I have to be able to trust the people to give me legit facts that I'm Guys, so this has been the end of the premiere episode of Posted Times, which I hope to post weekly. We'll see what happens. I don't know, this is my first episode. I can't really make any massive, kind of, grandiose... Uh, commitment. Okay guys, so make sure to go up there and subscribe, go down there and like, go down there and share on whichever networks you choose to, and make sure to comment, possibly on the question of the day, which is, with all the crap that's going on with CNN and Fox and these complete and utter lies that have been posted in the media, what is your opinion on journalism? Do you think that it's going more towards paper? Do you think that it's becoming more more focused on the YouTubers like myself, giving you the facts, supposedly. Do you really just not care for journalism whatsoever? Please make sure to put your opinions down in that comment box and click the post. Let's start a conversation. So I will, I will hopefully see you in another week. Please make sure that if you haven't already, go to the cursory things video. I will be talking about tons of really cool stuff. So yeah. Bye.